So we've kind of gone through steps, right? We should always try to factor quadratic expressions first. If it's not factorable and the coefficient a is 1, the coefficient of x squared is 1, then we can complete the square. That was option number 2. Well, what if a is not 1? Yes, technically you can complete the square. It's just a little bit more complicated, so we didn't go through that. So our next solution is going to be to use the quadratic formula. Um, now, there are plenty of little songs that people have done. There's one to like Twinkle Twinkle the Star, there's one to the Weasel. I'm not a soloist, so I'm not going to sing this morning. I'm sorry if you were looking forward to that, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, you can look it up on YouTube if you need help memorizing this equation right here. Um, we have three possibilities for our solutions. Uh, we can have two real solutions. Those can be whole numbers. If they are whole numbers, that means that your expression could have been factored. Uh, fractions, again, that usually means that it could have been uh, factored. Or you could end up with something under this radical that does not simplify. Okay, those are three real solutions. You can have one real solution. That will occur when uh, what's under the square root reduces to zero. And then we can have two imaginary solutions. That means that we got a negative under the radical. So graphically, let's talk about what that means. Um, if we're talking quadratics, our parabola is correct. So you've got the option where your parabola could cross the x-axis twice. That's two real solutions. It could look like that. It could look like this. You know, there are a bunch of different uh, scenarios there. Uh, one real solution occurs in the case where the parabola just touches the x-axis, okay, whether it's um, from above or from below, it just touches. That's one real solution. And then two imaginary solutions means that your quadratic never actually touches the x-axis. Um, but technically, we still do have two solutions. They are just not real numbers. They are what we call imaginary numbers. OK, so those are the three scenarios, what they look like visually. Let's actually use the quadratic formula now. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I believe that these are on, it's been a couple days since we've used that uh, packet. But remember, we had some problems on the front. Um, or all those exercises, I can't remember. Never mind, never mind. These are just more examples. But we will need that packet here in a second because those are going to be your practice problems. Okay? <clears throat> we have done quite a few of these. We're on number 27 already. Um, just like with factoring, if we're going to use, if we're going to solve this using the quadratic formula, it must be equal to zero. It's got to be in standard form equal to zero. Um, now, we have an option here. We could just move the 3 in um, so that we only have to move one term. Really, since we're not trying to factor this, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's just move one term so we don't have to worry about uh, messing up signs and whatnot. Um, so we've got negative 6n squared minus 3n plus 45. Okay, so that means A is negative 6, B is negative 3, and C is 45. I really don't think that it will kill you to, to write that over the side at least the first few times that we do this, just to make sure. Okay, so X is equal to, when it says negative B, it doesn't just mean to make the number negative. It really means the opposite sign of what B is. So right now, and I'm going to write it like this, <clears throat> b is negative 3. So we're going to put another negative in front of that. So that's going to make it positive 3. Okay, plus or minus, that's where our two solutions are going to come from. The square root of b squared, anytime you square a negative number, make sure that you put that in parentheses. b squared minus 4 times a times c. And that is all over 2 times a. 
Now, you really need to do this in pieces. You don't need to just try and type everything into your calculator at one time. So negative negative 3 becomes positive 3. Let's type in what's under that square root. And let's talk about a few things that you need to make sure that you are careful of. Number one, what I just mentioned, when you square a negative number, you put it in parentheses. And we can just type in the rest of that expression. Okay, so negative 3 squared minus 4 times negative 6 times 45. We get 1,089. And 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Now, I have no idea if 1,089 is a perfect square, so I'm just going to type it in and see. It is. We don't really usually go beyond... 12 squared, so I would not have known that that was 33 squared. So now we have 3 plus or minus 33 over negative 12, and whenever that is a perfect square, you need to go ahead and crunch those numbers. Okay, you need to go ahead and split it up. So 3 plus 33 is 36. 36 divided by negative 12 is negative 3. 33, or excuse me, 3 minus 33 is negative 30. Negative 30 over 12 does not divide evenly, but both are divisible by negative 3. Oh, excuse me, negative 6. More than that. So we get 5 over 2. Bless you. Those are our two solutions. Meaning that our original expression would have factored. When you get two whole numbers, that means your original expression would have factored. But obviously, looking at it, it's a little bit more involved uh, factoring because we've got negative 6 as a leading coefficient. We'd have to take out a GCF and um, kind of do some guessing and checking. But it is doable. Okay, Let's look at the next one. 2 minus 8b is equal to 2b squared. Now again, you have a choice. Okay, signs really don't, I don't want to say they don't matter, um, but you can move the one term and just have the negative 2, uh, or you could move two terms, just be careful if you do that, um, that you are careful with your signs. Now just for the sake of this example, I am going to move the two terms on the left. So we have 2b squared plus 8b, because we moved it, minus 2, because we moved it. Okay, so um, a is positive 2, b is positive 8, and c is negative 2. So let's plug that in. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Let's plug in what is under the radical. 8 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 2. You can do it with parentheses, you can do it with multiplication symbols, it doesn't matter. We get 80 over 4. Now, I know that 80 is not a perfect square because 81 is a perfect square. <coughs> so, in this case, really, I am fine with you leaving the answer in that form, but I am going to show you how to simplify that because the answer key will have it simplified. Uh, number 1... And I know you're going to be tempted to do this. You cannot just simplify that 8 over 4. Okay? Because of this plus or minus right here, all three terms have to be able to be reduced. And right now, you cannot, you can't mess with that uh, 80 under the square root using just regular um, arithmetic. Okay? <clears throat> what we need to do with 80 there is we need to decide, is there a perfect square over here that will evenly divide into 80. 
Obviously, four does. Is there a bigger one? Um, I think 16. 16 times 5 is 80. So this is how you would simplify that expression. Rewrite 80 as 16 times 5. Okay. The square root of 16 is 4. So we're going to put 4 in front of the radical. We cannot take the square root of 5. Well, I mean, we can take the square root of 5, but it's not an even whole number. Okay, so we're going to leave the 5 under there. Now, all of these terms... have a factor of 4. 8, 4, and 4, we can reduce all of those by a... All of those can reduce by 4, so let's do that. <clears throat> so you, after you break the 16 up, you can uh, simplify everything except the square root. Like, how does that work? Is it because the 4 is attached to it? The, yeah, the 4 is in front. Okay. So it's 4 times that, so you can, you can divide by that 4. So negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2, and 4 divided by 4 is 1, and on the bottom, 4 divided by 4 is 1, so we really don't have a denominator anymore. Okay? So this is the answer that's going to show up on the answer key, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. I am okay with you leaving it right there. Okay, recognizing that 80 is not a perfect square and just leaving that in the square root. But if you want to reduce it, that's fine. Okay, that's what the answer on the answer key is going to look like. <coughs> okay, um, so we've had a whole number answer, or two whole, <coughs> excuse me, two real numbers. We've had a radical um, answer. Let's see what else we can turn up here. 7k squared plus 6k is equal to negative 4. So let's move that one term, move that 4 to the other side. Okay, it must always be equal to 0. The only ones of these quadratics that do not need to be equal to 0 are when we're just taking square roots, when k squared is the only variable, bless you, or when we're completing the square. And remember, we move the constant to the other side. But if we're factoring or using the quadratic formula, it's got to be equal to 0. So A is 7, B is 6, C is 4. So quadratic formula, negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2 times A. Let's do this now. 6 squared minus 4 times 7 times 4. Ooh, negative 76. Haven't run into that yet. <clears throat> First of all, 76 is not a perfect square, so just leave it. Um, but we do not leave negatives under radicals. So what we do, and I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but there's this thing called I. It's the imaginary number. It stands for the square root of negative 1. So whenever you have a negative under the square root, that negative comes out as I. And let me check 76. Is it divisible by 4? It's divisible by 4. So we can also... <clears throat> it's divisible by 4, so that means the square root of 4 is 2. 2 comes out... 4 times 19 gave us 76. So what's going to show up on the answer key, you can reduce those by a factor of 2. Negative 3 plus or minus i, square root of 19 over 7. That is what's going to show up on the answer key. But I am fine with you. You do have to take out the negative. Okay, Don't leave a negative under the square root. It should always come out as I, so I'm good with either one of those solutions. Okay, I've done several. We've seen an example of each case. Two rational real roots, uh, 
two real radical roots and we've got the imaginary roots as well. I want you to